The Super Nintendo is possibly my favourite console ever. It has some of my favourite games of all time on it and holds a special place in my heart that makes it very difficult for any gaming device to replace. It was my system of choice growing up and I continue to collect games for it and play them to this day. That being said, growing up I had no idea that I was only able to play a selection of SNES titles. There were many for instance released in the United States which I would never be able to play. Games like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy 3 were not released in the UK and it wasn't until much later that I'd be able to enjoy them. Even with the American games though, there was always a way around it. I had adapters, as many people did, which let you put a PAL game on one side and an NTSC game in the other, so that the NTSC one could be played on a PAL machine. It was through this method that I first enjoyed ActRaiser, a game that was actually released in Europe but far too expensive to own. Price was one of the reasons many people played imports, Certain games seemed to be cheaper when coming from the States, so this was the best way to enjoy them. However, as I got older, my interest changed from games released in America to games released in Japan. I've always loved RPGs, and JRPGs most of all. I didn't get a chance to play many on the SNES because there wasn't a huge amount released in the UK. What games I did play, I loved. Terra Enigma, Secret of Mana, Illusion of Time and more all captivated my imagination and sense of adventure. Years later, on the PS1, I played Final Fantasy VI and VII for the first time and my love for the genre took hold. I'd play any JRPG I could get my hand on and that has continued to this day. It was only a few years ago though I realised just what I had been missing. The amount of games released on the Super Famicom but not on the SNES is massive. There are plenty of Mahjong and Quiz titles among them which nobody really cares about but there are also plenty of action and RPG titles, the latter especially. I've always been a traditionalist and loved owning a cart rather than emulating, so for the time being I had no real way of playing them. Then the Retron 5 came out. The Retron 5 has had a bit of a lukewarm reception in the retro gaming community. Many people are not fans of how the system has supposedly stolen code from other emulators and there are latency issues. But it did have one particular feature which really caught my eye. It was able to apply translation patches to genuine SNES carts. I ordered a few random Super Famicom games off eBay, applied the patches and off I went. The first one I tried was Final Fantasy V. I played Final Fantasy IV and VI in compilations before but never V. The patch worked perfectly and there was no latency issues at all given the fact it was an RPG so it was not a problem if the input had a very slight lag to it. Best of all, it looked great in HD. I really loved that I was able to put the cart on my shelf and play it as if I was simply playing any other game. I beat it and from then on I was hooked. The amount of quality RPGs which I never even knew existed is simply outstanding. At this point I should qualify one of the defining aspects of collecting games on the Super Famicom. The games are absolutely dirt cheap. They are literally a couple quid or less each so you can pick up huge bundles of them for next to nothing. They are even a good option for playing many games which are expensive to buy in the UK. I played through Chrono Trigger for the first time by buying a Japanese cart rather than an American one and applying a translation patch. The footage in this video has just been a selection of some of the games I own and have enjoyed. It's a bit of a niche hobby in the gaming world, I admit, but I really want to urge any retro gamers to expand your horizons a little if you're a fan of 16-bit RPGs in particular. There really is a wealth of games out there, from Wars to Fader, that need a bit of appreciation. So start your adventure into the world of Super Famicom translations, you won't regret it. Thanks for watching this little video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have anything related to the topic you'd like to start a discussion on please do leave a comment below. Check out the rest of my channel where I make slightly more involved videos such as top fives and mini documentaries and even consider subscribing if you enjoy them. Goodbye!